Broken Promises Skills. Broken Promises Skills. Broken Promises Skills. Broken Promises Skills. I'm protesting because at the global level right now there is a shortage of in funding of HIV AIDS. If all HIV infected people could be treated, because HIV infected uh, patients, when they are treated, do not transmit anymore, we could stop the epidemic in 30 years. Ten years ago, with the UNGAS declaration, countries all over the world pledged to achieve universal access by 2010. And here we are in 2010, and support, financial support to achieve universal access is completely inadequate. Now what we're seeing is that that funding is not coming in at the rates it needs to be coming in. The financial crisis is being used as an excuse to cut off AIDS funding. The economies will die, everything will die if they do not fulfill their promises. Because if they have to lead economies that are sound, they must have sound people. All Eastern Europe is actually dependent on the Global Fund money. It's the major donor. It's the main donor, for example, harm reduction for injecting drug users. If we reduce the, the funding of, of the Global Fund, um, we are going to lose 10-15 years of, of work in the field. Several countries, major donors, have begun to scale back their funding of the Global Fund. One of those countries is the United States. Obama made bold promises during his campaign to increase funding for the Global Fund and has not yet kept those promises. In fact, here in Austria, where we stand today, the Austrian government, while they've given some money for this conference that we're participating in, has not contributed any money to the Global Fund. When the financial system was under pressure two, two years ago, in a couple of weeks' time, all of the Western governments came together with, I believe, the economists estimated at eight trillion dollars to rescue the financial system, which needed to be rescued. Okay, but that proves that when there is political will, when there is political commitment to solve a problem, they can do it. It strikes me as we listen to this, and we want 20 billion dollars for the Global Fund, that, that, that BP has taken that out of their bank account to support cleanup of the Gulf. If they can turn around and take 20 billion dollars out of their bank account, think in reality how easy it is to get that 20 billion dollars to give to the global fund to actually save people's lives all around the globe. We see that some countries soon will not be eligible to the global fund, like Belarus, like Azerbaijan, like Kazakhstan, some other countries. And this is mainly because there is not enough money in the global fund and donors are pushing, okay, we have not enough money, so let's prioritize that where sort of biggest problems are. And countries that are doing well, that are managing to prevent HIV epidemic, are becoming punished. The idea is that the countries are rich enough to fund uh, the epidemic themselves. But what's happening in our region is that because stigma and discrimination are so high, and because the epidemic is not prioritized, the, the, the money isn't going where it needs to go. So people in our region with HIV, and people in our region who are at risk for HIV, actually have smaller chances of getting this treatment and prevention that they need than in countries that are much poorer. We, communities of those living in HIV, are very much scared about those years what are coming after Global Fund leaves Belarus. 100% absolutely all medicaments are covered by Global Fund. The government doesn't spend any ruble for medicaments for HIV positive people. 95% of the activities that are right now financed by the Global Fund will terminate at the same moment when the, those grants are finished, when the Global Fund stops financing these grants in Serbia.
the people in need deserve the support and assistance and the Global Fund is there as the best mechanism to assist them, to provide them support and to save their lives. Any kind of step back is a, has a very high price, the price that we can count in human lives. We need to shame our governments. We need to shame our governments for not paying their share. We should tell our governments, you could do it for the financial system, you could do it also to save people. In our case, we want to make sure that the Global Fund is adequately funded so that we can start putting an end to these three killer diseases. Ethiopian Interfaith Forum for Development Dialogue and Action, supported by the Global Fund.